And where the PANDAS book says we can't go from A to B, there, there are no fossils and we don't know how to study them. Actually, we've gone from A to B and to C, D, E, F, and G. We have the fossils, we have the, the, the transitional features, we have the ways of analyzing them with many different lines of evidence, and we're looking for the picture that accounts for the most lines of objective evidence. With each fossil, Padian refuted Panda's claim that different life forms appear suddenly by showing how fossils of extinct organisms bridge the gaps between species, resulting in a picture of gradual evolution just as Darwin proposed. The reporters in the courtroom were just amazed that we knew all this stuff and how come they hadn't learned about this stuff before. And the reason is, it's not in textbooks because the creationists fight so hard to keep it out. That's been a big influence. The court took a break, and I remember the judge saying something like, you know, biology class adjourned, you know, for, for lunch. And he was, you know, smiling. And it was clear that we had the judge interested in science. I'm a professor of integrated biology. Lawyers for the parents may have impressed the judge and reporters. But many in Dover wondered, why is evolution taught as fact, if it's just a theory? Maybe Darwinism is the prevalent theory out there today, but it is a theory. Uh, it isn't a law of science, it isn't you know, a fact, it is a theory. We just wanted alternative views uh, talked about too. We, w we weren't saying, don't talk about Darwin, talk about Darwin, it's a, it's a theory. But that's what it is. It's not Darwin's law. It's not Darwin's fact. It's Darwin's theory. To say it's just a theory is really a bit insulting to science because it, it holds, in science, a theory holds more weight than just a fact does. And here I think the term theory needs to be looked at in the way that scientists consider it. A theory is, is not something we think of in the middle of the night after too much coffee and not enough sleep. <laughs> that's an idea. A theory in science means a large body of information that's withstood a lot of testing. It probably consists of a number of different hypotheses and many different lines of evidence. Gravitation is a theory that's unlikely to be falsified, even if we saw something fall up. It might make us wonder, but we try to figure out what was happening rather than immediately just dismiss gravitation. Facts are just the minutiae of science. By themselves, they can be right or wrong. But a theory is something that's been tested and tested over and over again, built on, revised. It continues to be reworked and revised. Dr. Miller, would you agree that Darwin's theory of evolution is not an absolute truth? Well, I certainly would, for the very simple reason that no theory in science, no theory is ever regarded as absolute truth. We don't regard atomic theory as truth. We don't regard the germ theory of disease as truth. We don't regard the theory of friction as truth. We regard all of these theories as well-supported, testable explanations that provide natural explanations for natural phenomena. Should we regard Darwin's theory of evolution as tentative? We should regard all scientific explanations as being tentative, and that includes the theory of evolution. Science is about discovering the unknown, what we don't know. I don't focus on what we know as a scientist. I want to find new things to tell me about what I don't know. 